So in this video, I'm going to introduce you to the chi-square distribution. So the chi-square distribution is a family of distributions. It's not just one distribution. In the same way that the normal distribution isn't just one distribution, the standard normal is one distribution. But the normal distribution, there are two parameters that you can choose, the mu parameter and the sigma squared parameter. And depending on your choices, you get a different distribution. So the normal distribution is the whole family of all of them, the collection of all of those different possible normal distributions. Similarly, the chi-squared distribution is not just one distribution, it's a class or a family of distributions. However, in chi-squared there is actually only one parameter rather than two in the case of the normal distribution. And that parameter has a special name, it's called the degrees of freedom of the chi-squared distribution. So if we have a random variable v, and this is going to be our random variable that will be distributed in a chi-squared fashion, we could call it a chi-squared random variable. The way we write that it's distributed in a chi-squared distribution is like so, is distributed, and then we write the Greek letter chi, which is this fancy curly x here, we write squared there, and then we put the parameter often in a... Um, a subscript like so, uh, so n here, and that's the degrees of freedom. So n is the degrees of freedom, or the DOF for short. And the degrees of freedom needs to be an integer, and it needs to be a positive integer, so a natural number, one, two, three, four, five, etc. And you'll see when we look at where the chi-squared distribution comes from, why it's the case that it can only be one of those counting numbers. So I've just written n is the degrees of freedom and n needs to be a natural number. So let's now look at where the chi-squared distribution actually comes from. So we're going to actually consider some standard normals because the chi-squared distribution comes from the squares of standard normals. That's why it's called the chi-squared distribution. That's where the squared comes from. So we're going to take some random variables x, i, and they are going to be standard normally distributed. So they're distributed normal, not one. So mean zero and standard deviation or variance one. And they're going to be independent and identically distributed. And I need you to pick a degrees of freedom that you want. So one of these natural numbers, and indeed this expression that I'm going to come up with will work no matter which one you pick. So you need to pick one, two, three, four, some counting number. And then I'm going to need that many of these IID standard normals. So I've got x1, x2, x3, all the way up to xn. So i varies from 1 to n. And then what I'm going to do is consider squaring all of these things and then adding them together. So taking x1 squared plus x2 squared plus all the way up to xn squared. So these things, remember, they are random variables, so they're being drawn from standard normal distributions. They're taking on some value from negative infinity to infinity, and the probability of getting a certain value or getting in a certain range is given by that beautiful bell-shaped curve of the standard normal. You can then take the answer that you get once you've drawn from that distribution, you can square it, and then you can add it to the answer that you get if you draw again from uh, the standard normal distribution, where the answer that you get in this second one is independent from what you got in the first one, i.e. what you get in this first one doesn't affect at all the probability of what you'll get in the second one. And then you can continue doing this where all of them are independent draws from the standard normal. And of course, because you're squaring your answer, you're always going to end up with a positive number, and then you're adding all these positive numbers together. So again, you'll end up with a positive answer here. And then the question is... I want to know what is the chance or what is the probability density of getting a certain value, a certain positive number? What's the probability distribution of this thing that I create here? And this is where the chi-square distribution comes from, answering that question. Because this thing, this random variable that comes from taking the sums of these squares of standard normal random variables, this is going to be chi-squared distributed with n degrees of freedom, i.e. it will be distributed in the same way as this thing v here. In fact, I could define v to be equal to this.
So if I write v is equal to this, with these all defined in this way, and they're independent and identically distributed, then v will have the exact same distribution as what I've written up here, chi-squared, with n degrees of freedom. So if you just picked one standard normal here, and v was just equal to x1 squared, then that would be chi-squared distributed with one degree of freedom. If you pick two, x1 squared plus x2 squared, then that v, will, which is the sum of the two, will be chi-squared distributed with two degrees of freedom, and so on. Um, so that's why the n, the degrees of freedom, can only be a counting number, because it reflects how many of these squares of standard normal random variables that you've added together. So a fair question at this point is, this distribution, the chi-squared distribution, this is a famous distribution. This is one that you've probably heard of, even if you don't yet know before watching this video what it actually is. Why do I care about this sums of squares of standard normals? Why is this distribution so famous? Why is this distribution so important in statistics? Well, I'm not going to give you the complete answer to that. The complete answer to that is difficult. But... I'll give you some hint of why this distribution is so important. So let's assume that we have a random variable that is standard normally distributed and we're drawing from this random variable. So we're taking a sample from this random variable that is standard normal. So we're taking these points here are our sample, I'm saying, from, that are being drawn from this distribution, x1, x2. So they are numbers from negative infinity to infinity. And the probability that they take on a certain value is given by or specified by this distribution. So let's say we take a sample of size n, and then let's work out the sample variance from our sample. However, let's do it a little bit more simply because the true, stan uh, the true sample variance is complicated, and I'll speak about that in just a moment. Let's say that I tell you beforehand that they are distributed in this way and that the true mean is zero. So when you calculate the sample uh, variance, instead of subtracting off the sample mean, I want you to subtract off the true mean. So if we do that calculation, it will then be the sum of xi minus zero. So I've told you what the true mean is, so you don't need to worry about actually instead subtracting off the sample mean. Um, and then you just square these add them all up, and then divide by n. That's what you'll get as your calculation for the sample variance if I tell you what the true mean is and you use the true mean rather than your sample mean. So that minus zero has no effect at all, and then we'll just get 1 over n, the sum of the xi squares. So I've written that out here uh, explicitly for... Uh, comprehension, so 1 over n, x1 squared plus x2 squared, all the way up to xn squared. Now, for now, let's just forget this 1 over n, then you've just got this sum of squares, and let's think about how this would be distributed. Well, each one of these is being drawn from the standard normal, and we're assuming that the draws are independent, i.e. what you get as your first sample value does not affect what you get as the second sample value, and what you get as the third sample value is not influenced by what you get as from the first two. So they're all independent. And then you can see that the way that this sum of squares is going to be distributed is what we're trying to work out here, i.e. the squares of these random variables that are all iid and normal naught one. So that's why this is so important. These chi-squared distributions, they have to do with how your sample variance is going to end up distributed. So when you take different samples, you know, if I, this is sample one, if I was to generate another sample of n things that had all been drawn independently from this standard normal and work out the sample variance, the answer that you'll get between the two different samples is going to be different because the well, it might be the same. It might just be the case that you get the same answer, but it's likely to be different. And you can then ask, what's the probability of getting a certain value for that sample variance? How is that sample variance distributed? And that's what the chi-square distribution is and why it's so important. It's about the distribution of the sample variance. And then, of course, all you need to do is scale by this constant value, the 1 over n. So, in fact, your answer here is going to be a scaled version of a chi-squared distribution.
So this is a hint of why this distribution is so important to statistics. Now you might say with good reason, when I take a sample and find the sample variance, usually I don't use the true mean here. Usually I would first calculate the sample mean and then I'd use that in the calculation of my sample variance. So the actual calculation I would do is 1 over n, the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of the xi minus x bar, where this is the sample mean, squared like so, which is different to this. So then if you write that out explicitly, so I've done that here, 1 over n, x1 minus x bar squared plus x2 minus x bar squared plus all the way up to xn minus x bar squared. Forget the 1 over n for a moment and just see the sum of squares. We could ask how is that distributed? That's going to be a more complicated expression than this. We'd need x1 minus x bar squared plus x2 minus x bar squared plus all the way up to xn minus x bar squared. Assuming again that the x1, x2 all the way up to xn are independent be drawn from this standard normal, we can ask how is that thing distributed? That's a much more difficult question, obviously a really, really important question, because this is what we more normally use as the sample variance. So if we want to know how the sample variance is going to be distributed, we need to understand how this thing is going to be distributed. It is a much more complicated question, we're not going to go into it here because it is difficult. But this sum of squared differences between the variable and the mean of all the independent variables, this ends up chi-squared distributed as well. And if you know something about statistics, and you may well, you may well already have done these sort of tests, even though you're now watching this video to find out more about the distributions, because people often teach uh, the statistical test without actually teaching the probability theory that underlies it. But this combination does end up chi-squared distributed, but you lose a degree of freedom, amazingly, by subtracting off these x-bars. So it ends up chi-squared distributed, not with n degrees of freedom, but with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Whereas this one, where we have the true mean, this ends up chi-squared distributed with n degrees of freedom. This one ends up chi-squared distributed with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. As I say, it's difficult to understand why that is, and we'll leave that for a future video. Uh, of course, you then just need to scale by this 1 over n, so it ends up a multiple of the chi-squared distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So that is just a hint of why this distribution is so important. It's about the sampling distributions for the sample variances. So you already know, most likely, the way that the uh, sample mean is distributed. The central limit theorem tells us something amazing about that. The chi-squared distribution is now starting to think about the question of sample variances and what are the sampling distributions of sample variances. So we'll leave that behind now and we'll go back just to the more basic probability theory.